She can hear men's thoughts, instantly regrets it. This woman gains the ability to hear men's thoughts, okay. instantly regrets it. Okay. Meet sports agent Ali Davis, who gets up extra early to deal with hey, stupid clients. Hey, look at that young boy Muhammad in the back, man. Shout out to Ali, man. Ali. Anything to stay on top of the grinding pyramid. She's helped by her assistant Brandon, who escorts her to her job at Summit Worldwide Management. And then we see her delete a dating app. The only grinding she has time for is work. She's been oh. working so hard to get a partner promotion. She arrives at work and gets on the elevator. Ali sees the handsome neighbor she calls Captain Um Funk Tastic. That's close enough to the act. Guys, we lost her. We lost her, guys. <laughs> Actual name. Both Ali and Brandon try to get his attention. Yes, Brandon likes men. Based. <laughs> Unfortunately for both of them, the Sigma male listens to the American Psycho soundtrack and has no time for women. The pair arrive at the Alpha you know male. Be crazy, bro. Imagine stealing someone's headphones, and them niggas are listening to the national anthem. <laughs> you just put them shits on. Oh, there can you see? <laughs> Dominated Summit, nasty. something between a Boy Scout club and gotchi movie fans. Ali gathers with the other guys for a meeting where her boss Nick is getting ready to select the new senior VP. Nick tosses a football to his pick, and hey! Ali intercepts it, thinking it was for her. Of course, it's not. It's Eddie, a guy sitting two seats next to her. Hold on. Ali thought she had to deal with her boss. I mean, Come after all the sussy things, she's definitely deserving of a- Sussy things? What the hell she do? Was she sucking for her position? Come on, girl. You know that's a no-no. You can't be gul gulking for your position. Promotion. Allie confronts Nick. She wants to find out why she wasn't promoted. Well, it turns out that while Allie is a hard worker, she doesn't connect well with the other men. Allie oh. counters, saying she does a lot of connecting with men. Well, until she deleted the dating app. Allie storms out of Nick's office and declares she will sign rising basketball superstar Jamal Barry and prove to everyone why she deserves the promotion. Allie spends time with her father, Skip, at the boxing gym he operates. Daddy supports his girl. It's a man's world. World, baby go break yeah. their balls something like that be tough keep your chin up pull yourself up by the bootstraps uh -huh. just be yourself you know all the usual advice they go out for dinner and ali sees a new bartender named will ali decides okay, to take I her see, i see you will hold on let's, let's take a let's take a better look at will they go out for let's dinner let's take a better look at will Oh, look at that nigga, Will. And her named Will. Allie decides to take her father's advice and show the man her balls. Allie introduces herself and Will makes her a special cocktail, vodka with sweet syrup. You know, things will escalate quickly. They go back to his place and play hide and seek. Fifty Shades of Black. Allie wakes up the fall. Fifty Shades of Black. <laughs> that was quick. Wow. We, we, they didn't even get, did they, did they really even get to know each other? Like, God dang. Long day and sees Will's son Ben wearing a strange mask on his head. Wakanda forever moment. Actually, it reminds me more of Bane. She realizes she's late for the grind and runs out. Noticing a picture of Will with his wife, Ali leaves, ashamed of being with a married <laughs> man after only meeting him for two hours. Relatable. Ali goes to sign a deal with Jamal and his manager. You talking about relatable your slash father joe dalla what a name things don't work out from the start as ali called joe a butthole behind his back and he heard it he also wants a magazine cover for his son but ali oh. has to negotiate with basketball legend lisa leslie to share with joe lisa refuses and throws joe's intentions to work with ali out the door Damn. to make things worse brandon points out that ali had something stuck to her back a suspicious white stain and everyone saw it <laughs> we've all been there just oh my god Oh, it can't get much worse. She got caught with semen on the back. Oh my god. Kenny, guys, I'm grinding my way to becoming a wizard at 40. Allie joins her best friends Mary, Olivia, and Sierra for Mary's bachelorette party. The girls feel Allie's pain, but they agree with her being bad with men. Woman moment. Olivia Damn. says she hired a psychic named Sister to read her fortunes. Allie goes first. Sister reads her Uno cards and sees all the problems. Well, it's written on her face. Girl, if you want to solve your problems, drink some tea. Then the ladies hit a club to dance. Mix it with some angry juice and oregano. Trip to the toilet? Worse. Allie gets punched by a sussy balloon. Trips and knocks herself on ganjas. She what? wakes up in the hospital and hears she got, she got played by a balloon. She got punked by a balloon. I ain't never heard of someone getting knocked out by a balloon, bro. Okay, this girl's an L. She's just an L. Thoughts about drinking and eating salt through her nose on the job. Wait a second. She just heard that man's thoughts. Now I see where things are going. Allie is greeted oh, by he's her a friends and Brandon, who drives her to work. On the way, Allie hears Brandon's sarcastic remarks about her before they both realize she can hear his thoughts. Immediately, they both freak out. Allie gets out of the car and walks to her work, hearing random men's thoughts. And yep, it's not Einstein-level dialogue. 
we know what he's saying. Yeah. Look at that fine ass. I remember back in the day those fine asses was on the market. I could get them for 1936. Nowadays they're a lot more expensive, but I can't wait to buy that thing. <clears throat> As you've guessed, overwhelmed, she gets to work and discovers even more nasty, dark secrets of the men around her. Just when it gets funny, Ali wants to get rid of her new talents and pay a visit to Sister, but Sister can't do anything. After a relaxing head massage, Ali realizes it's not that bad after all, and reading men's thoughts can get her a career boost. So she goes for it. Ali learns She's that her colleagues herself. have a secret poker night and don't invite her. She shows up at the home of Ethan and finds Nick there with Joe Dalla and Kevin, as well as Mark Cuban, Grant what Hill, the hell and is that Nick? What is Shad doing? What are these niggas? doing bro what is their purpose hello neil nice setup no wonder you weren't invited ali reads the guy's thoughts and beats all of them until it's down to her and joe she intentionally loses to him and the man is pleased well played now with such a talent you could possibly continue emptying men's pockets still for some reason ali decides to continue her lousy agent job while at home ali meets the neighbor she's been crushing on she reads his thoughts and discovers that he wants her here now man girls really do be living on easy mode things escalate quickly and the man is about to give her a tour of his house but then she discovers his love of bane so she retreats later to give her a tour of his house but then she discovers his love of bane this nigga is cosplaying as bane what is it what is this i've never seen something like this in my life like i i just i okay man so a medium sm mask oh <laughs> Great. <laughs> she retreats. Later, Joe brings Jamal to Summit Worldwide Management to hear a presentation from Kevin on how they can market Jamal's status. Kevin puts on a cringy rap video with Jamal's face photoshopped in, but Allie can hear Jamal and Joe don't like it. I'm sorry, but there's no need to be a psychic to see that. She steps up and tries to appeal to Jamal by hearing his thoughts, but she also totally blasts Kevin's idea. As you've guessed, the lady outplayed them. Joe and Jamal are impressed. She catches them on their way out and invites them to a basketball game over the weekend, but Joe considers spending that time with his family. He also also doesn't think Ali is a family person and doesn't trust a lady without a family. That's damn. when Will and Ben walk in. Oh, damn. Ooh, that nigga is cooking up, bro. Shit. It's perfect timing. Ali pretends that Will and Ben are her husband and son. This makes Joe trust Ali and agree to go to the game. If only you could just pretend someone was your girlfriend. <laughs> Ben returns Allie her driving license, which she forgot at his place. Then Ben lets it slip that his wife had died due to death a while back. Tragic. Allie feels terrible for assuming Will was unfaithful, so she tries to make it up to him by inviting the boys to the game, and to follow her fake family okay. plan, of course. Okay. Meanwhile, Kevin, who made that cringe rap video, is furious. He confronts her about how she made him look, but Allie believes Kevin was the one who voted her down so that Eddie would win. But yeah. Kevin thinks the opposite, and he openly states that he sees how she pulls in numbers and is actually rooting for her. So it's not about patriarchy. It's just that Ali is too aggressive. It was obvious to everyone except her. The fakers proceed to- Wow, so everyone had her back, right? Everyone had her back, but she, she, she wants to, you know, they thought, wow, okay, interesting. So we were pro-women the whole time. Who would have knew? The skybox and enjoy small talking. It's a bit awkward because Ali didn't tell Will that she's faking it. Girls never tell guys when they're faking it. Anyway, Ben inserts his five cents and says his birthday is coming up and then he wants a race car cake, which Ali promises him. He then gives her an unexpected hug. At least Ben knows how to act. Outside the skybox, Ali introduces Jamal to Carl. What the hell is Carl Anthony Towns doing here? They just got a bunch of random niggas. For no reason! What the hell? Carl Anthony Towns. Jamal is freaking out in his mind, but maintains his cool as he meets his idol. Joe then shares with Ali that he seems keen to sign with her firm. Idol? School Carl Anthony Towns is your idol? That's a random ass idol. I, I'm going to just keep it a buck. That is random as hell. Or, that's what I call a hat trick. Oh wait, it's basketball. Scent, game, match? Never mind. Meanwhile, Brandon turns on Mr. Morality and gets mad that her boss is using Will as a fake family. So he makes her go out with Will this afternoon. It'll be a double day with Mary and her fiancé James. Because why not? Let's make it even more awkward. Allie also mentions to Brandon that a guy in the office named Danny actually likes- What the fuck is Pete doing here? <laughs> we got Shaq, Mark Cuban, Pete- this is a random ass cast. Guys, and has a crush on Brandon. Even Omegas can score in this world. Allie and Will go with Mary and James to a pool hall to play with balls. Okay. Allie hears James thinking about clapping the waitress, so Allie discreetly goes to whack him in the-
thoughts with the pool cue. Allie also hears Will thinking genuinely sweet thoughts about her, enough to give her butterflies in her stomach. Later, Allie introduces Will and Ben to her father. Although Skip seems skeptical of him initially, he warms up to Will as he sees him as a dedicated father, and they mm. both are in love. Just when things are looking up and they are ready at work, it turns out that Joe takes Jamal to China due to a deal orchestrated by Ethan. The latter has wow. left Summer Worldwide Management. Smart move. You know, this girl could also just leave the agency and do that whole poker thing we discussed earlier. But no, she ambitions. Could. Nick she is could. pissed and almost fires her. He then sees Will outside and reveals that Allie was just using him to make a deal with Joe. Will gets hurt and leaves. Woman manipulation moment. Later, <laughs> Allie attends... <laughs> Everything's biting her in the ass. Besides me. <laughs> Mary's wedding and has a lot of angry juice when they're in church and the couple- A lot of angry who? Moment. Later, Ellie attends Mary's wedding and has a lot of angry juice. What the fuck did they have to do with this? Talk about slick shots. When they're in church and the couple reads their vows, she steals the show by saying that James clapped Mary's cousin Gabby. Brandon tries to stop Allie, but she says he should shut up because he's just an assistant. The boy runs away, offended, but the party isn't over. Allie mentions how Ciara's husband has been polishing another man's whistle. No, can No, not the whistle. Man. At least polish the trombone. Yeah. This leads to an all-out battle royale as the ladies start fighting. A classic wedding in the Bronx. A random woman grabs a vase and knocks Allie out with what it. The Quite the highlight reel. Allie wakes up in the hospital again and meets the same doctor. But now she can't read his thoughts. Nice. Or not. Abilities are gone. Same with her friends. I know that feeling. For me, it all wow. started with the first 51 minute movies. I woke up two years later with no friends and a big stain of mayonnaise on my shirt. And I don't remember eating any hot dogs. What the hell are you talking about? Mayonnaise and hot dogs? Dogs? Oh, yep, you're the Caucasian most caucus of cockastenisticity. That is, this nigga said hot dogs and mayonnaise. Do you put mayonnaise on soup too? Anyway, Ali first apologizes to I Brandon. I just spit everywhere, bro, and everyone knows I'm a swallower, not a spitter. I don't know why that happened. At work for how she treated him. He forgives her, and we find out that they, with Danny, are in a relationship. Score. They discuss Jamal, and she realizes she doesn't listen to what he really wants. She finds him at the park where he loves to play basketball, and suggests he should stay in Atlanta, where he is happier. Ali later visits her friends. They're still mad at her, but she apologizes and offers to pay for their margarita Mondays. From now on, immediately gets forgiven. The NBA drafts happen, and Jamal stays in Atlanta. Joe thinks Allie for making Jamal happy. Nick calls for another conference with his team. Ethan gets back on the team but How will be on probation so for a year. So that leaves the partner seat empty. And guess who becomes the partner? Our girl Allie. However, How Allie decides she no longer wants to be part How did things just get good? the boys club. She's quitting and starting her own agency with Kevin as her partner, taking all her clients with her. She even decides to make Brandon an agent. Really? That Omega nerd? Allie goes to a birthday party for Ben and brings him the cake he wanted. Although Will is still mad, Allie apologizes and convinces him to give her another chance. He agrees, as long as they take it slow for now. No Fifty Shades of Grey. That's definitely what- Well, I thought it was Fifty Shades of- Black. Will wanted to hear. Does he also get Margarita Mondays? Allie, Will, and Ben walk together in the park as Allie discusses plans for her agency. Moral of the story? The original gender-flipped version of this movie is way better. <laughs> he just ended the video by saying men are better than women. How do y'all feel about that misogyny, chat? Hmm? Are y'all pro-misogyny? That's crazy. But I wish I would've watched more, some more of the uh, 50 Shades of Black. <laughs>